Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop today. Today we are going to be working on our 2022 Suzuki DRZ400 Supermoto. We are going to be installing some pads and rotors, so let's get right into it. Okay, before we get into the parts on the workbench and the tools you need, let's just uh, talk really quickly because uh, I hear a lot of questions about brake pads, brake discs, um, what the differences are. So there are more than this. There are you know, ceramic and carbon and stuff like that, but these are probably the three most uh, used types of brake pads and yes I know I'm an artist hopefully you can see my awesome brake pads there no that's not a rainbow um, so the the first one that you, you normally see is organic and that's uh, made of like rubber and glass um, the pros to an organic pad are there uh, they're the cheapest um, they are probably the most quiet and they are uh, the most gentle on your rotors because they're soft um, the cons to an organic pad are they don't stop as good. Uh, they do fade when they get hot. They are quite dusty because the compound of the rubber and glass is so soft and they do wear out the fastest. Um, the next is uh, semi-centered or semi-metallic that you normally hear them called. And those are made partially of metal. Um, they are an upgrade over the organic pad. They do have better stopping power. They are more fade resistant, um, but they are a little bit more expensive than the organic ones. And the ones we're going to be putting on our uh, DRZ is a fully centered pad. It's made 100% uh, of metal. Um, they will provide you the best stopping power, the least fade resistant whenever they get hot. Um, they do last the longest because they are very hard. Um, and they are exp a little bit more expensive and they are a little bit harder on your rotors. And as far as brake discs go, um, a lot of your older motorcycles uh, use a solid disc which is a single piece of steel, a one piece construction. A lot of newer motorcycles still use this in the rear. Um, the pros to that is uh, it's the least expensive. The cons are, you know, with it being fully steel, it's heavy. Uh, heat dissipation is not good, so that makes it prone to warping. The pad contacts the whole outer surface. It gets hot, the inner surface uh, really doesn't, and that has a tendency to warp. Um, Semi-floating discs, which is what our DRZ comes with, uh, it's made of aluminum and metal. The whole center hub is aluminum and the outside is actually steel. Um, there is a little bit of an air gap in there. It's not a fully floating rotor. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so there are spring washers in there to keep, keep the contact between the two, uh, but they do weigh a lot less than a solid rotor. Um, they have much superior heat dissipation. They do last longer because of that, uh, but they are more expensive than a solid rotor. And for a fully floating disc, which you typically don't see unless it's on like a racing unit, um, once again, it is made out of aluminum and steel, just like the uh, semi-floating rotor. Um, the pros is uh, it doesn't really have any contact with that center hub at all. It doesn't have those spring washers in there. It just has these little rivets, these little bobbins um, to connect to the hub. They are the most expensive. There's not very much improvement over a standard semi-floating rotor to a fully floating, um, and it's mainly only used in race applications. All right, so as far as brake pads go, we're going to be using EBCs. I've been using EBCs for probably 20 years. Um, this is a fully center pad, and it does say high friction, uh, long-lasting center pad for off-road racing and for street use on a supermoto, which is what we have. So this is the pads we're going to be using, and we are going to be using those um, rotors. These are made by Arashi. Um, a lot of really good reviews online about these, and you can see that gap where it doesn't actually touch, so the steel portion is separate from the hub. And it does have that little spring washer in there, and that's what actually... Keeps, uh, keeps these too tight so it, it doesn't rattle. A fully floating rotor would uh, rattle when you shake it. But um, yeah, that keeps the steel separate from the aluminum there. And that is the front. As far as the rear, it is a uh, just a solid rotor and it is vented as well. Uh, both of these are a wave style rotor. It's a little bit better with heat dissipation. Here's some of the tools we're gonna need. Uh, you probably don't need all of these. I mean, I'm gonna use some zip ties probably to hold my calipers up once I take them off. The uh, front axle nut and the rear axle nut are both a 24 millimeter, and this is the tool that comes in your kit. So if you don't have a 24 millimeter, you can do it by hand. Um, we'll need a flat blade screwdriver or a Phillips screwdriver. This is a 24 millimeter for your axle nuts, a 12, a 10, an eight millimeter, also a uh, six millimeter and a five millimeter Allen key. Um, we'll need a 12 millimeter wrench. Uh, use some Loctite on my fasteners. Probably gonna use a dead blow hammer to knock those axles out, and I do have some torque wrenches back there for some torque specs, and I probably will be using a pair of rubber gloves. I got these out of the uh, shop manual, so from a torque spec standpoint, those caliper mounting bolts, they're 12 millimeter, they're gonna be 19 foot-pounds. The pad pin bolts are eight mils, they're gonna be 13 foot-pounds. The front axle nut is a 24 millimeter, 
Gonna torque it in two separate phases. The first one's 15, the second one's 29 foot-pounds. The rear axle nut is also a 24 millimeter. It's gonna be a straight 74 foot-pounds. And then your front axle pinch bolts are 10 mils. They're gonna be 13 foot-pounds. And then your brake disc bolts are your six, mil six millimeter Allen. Those are gonna be seven foot-pounds. So I'll probably just start here in the front. I'm gonna use a 24 millimeter. I'm gonna cheat and use my little Milwaukee. I'll just go ahead and pop this loose. And you wanna make sure you pop this loose before you pop these loose or else it's just gonna spin on you. Next, you can uh, loosen up your 10 millimeter axle pinch bolts. Use our Phillips screwdriver for our speedo cable. Okay, before we pop the front axle out, we're gonna remove this. This is where our flathead screwdriver is used. It's your little pad pin cover cap. Should just throw it right out of there. And inside of there is a, a five millimeter Allen. Should be able to. Now if you pull this all the way out, the, uh, the pads will pop right out like that. So it's really simple to change the pads on these. I'm also going to use a 12 millimeter and I'm gonna go ahead and pop these loose. There's no washers or anything and that's gonna free our caliper up. So I have those caliper bolts out. I'm just gonna pull it off. I'm just going to uh, zip tie it. Our uh, front axle nut off. There is a washer underneath there. With that uh, front axle nut off and our pinch bolts loose, we should be able to pop this axle through to the other side. Should be able to pop these uh, six millimeter Allen bolts out. The old rotor comes right off. Pop our new rotor on. Put some blue Loctite on all of these fasteners. Don't need a lot, just a little bit. I'm gonna run all these down with this, but I'm not gonna torque them. Um, I'll do that with the torque wrench. So we'll just get them, get them snug. We've got our torque wrench at the seven foot pounds. So we're gonna to torque all these up. All right, so we've got our new rotor on. Uh, installation is just the opposite of removal. pads uh, I do have everything loose but they will just slide up in here like so and line up and then once you get them in you can take your pad pin and put it in if you have your pad pin started in there you're gonna need your tool because it is threaded you can thread it through tighten up these caliper bolts I'm just gonna run them down by hand and then we'll torque them all right 19 foot pounds. These caliper mounting bolts are 19 foot pounds. And that uh, caliper pad pin is 13 foot pounds. And that is your five millimeter Allen. Take your flathead screwdriver, put our little cap back on. I'm going 
gonna go ahead and torque our front axle pinch bolts down to 13 foot pounds, that's on both sides. Twenty-four millimeter. We're going to torque our front axle uh, first to fifteen foot-pounds. It's not a lot. And then we're going to crank it up to twenty-nine foot-pounds. And I did not mention this, but it's very important. Do not grab your brake lever uh, or actuate it at all while you're working on your front brakes because it'll. Uh, it can push that piston all the way out of its board. We'll give it a quick little uh, do I stop test. Yep, they work. Okay, so we got the front done, now we're in the rear. If you are just going to change your pads, this is this simple. It's an 8 millimeter for that pad pin. Pop your old pads out, you can slide your new ones right in, put your pad pin back in. Literally takes 60 seconds. Pop this 24 millimeter off. And there is a washer behind that. I'm gonna do these chain adjuster bolts. This is a 12 millimeter. Same thing on this side. And the same thing, I should be able to hit this axle nut right here and pop it out the other side. Caliper the same I did with the front. I'll just mount it up here. Okay, same story with the rear. Uh, these are those six millimeter Allen bolts, so I'm gonna pop all those out. Rotor pops right off. Before I do anything, put that new one on. I am gonna take the time to clean the spokes because this is the back wheel, and on mine it gets pretty grimy from all the chain lube, so I won't bore you with that. I get all these cleaned up and through the power of editing, a clean wheel. This DuPont uh, chain and sprocket degreaser is awesome. Do the same thing with our solid rear rotor here. Put that bad boy on, and I am going to uh, use that blue thread locker on all of these. I'm gonna torque all of these to seven foot-pounds. Rear wheel back in. All right, we're gonna to torque that rear axle nut to 74 foot-pounds. 74 foot-pounds. Always kind of spin it. Make sure it looks nice and square, and it does. So on these rear pads, the OEM ones, they do come with a little backing plate there. Hopefully you guys can see that. I am gonna reuse that backing plate, so you should just be able to get that off with a uh, flat blade screwdriver. 
And there is another plate underneath of it too. So there's two plates. So you have like a shim and then a backing plate. We are gonna reuse these on our new pads because they don't come with it. I'm just gonna slide that over. Okay, so I did get the backing plate on the new pads and there is a shim in between there. Just make sure you get that on good and you'll do that to both of them. Put that shim on, take that backing plate. So I kind of started at the top there. You should be able to snap it in like that. So now that we have both of our pads shimmed up with our backing plates, all I have to do is slide them in. Once you get your pads in, just take your pad pin and hand start it. Remember that is an eight millimeter. Just gonna run that down, not tighten it though. And let's torque it. And that pad pin will get torqued to 13 foot pounds. Same thing, once you get the rear in, you're gonna wanna spin it, check the brake. Seems to work good. As always, save all your factory parts. Never know when you might need them again. All right, everybody, that is it for our uh, wave rotor and brake pad install on a 2022 Suzuki DRZ 400 Supermoto. It is really simple to do. Um, brakes are a serious job though. I'm not a professional, so please perform at your own risk. If you guys do have any questions, please reach out to me and let me know. Uh, that is a 310 millimeter rotor up front and a 240 millimeter rotor in the rear. Um, unfortunately, I can't ride it today because it is about 19 degrees outside. So yeah, as always, I appreciate everybody for watching. Until next time, thank you and take care and uh, stay tuned because we will be riding this very soon and I'll be sure to let you know how they do. Whoopsie, whoopsie. I almost forgot the brake pads come with a sticker. You guys have to let me know if the audio is any better. I've been using the little DJI wireless mic. Actually, I'm not using it right now. <laughs> That's kind of stupid. And it does say here that it is, uh, uh, maybe. Eh, I'll get it off camera. And uh, wait for our, uh, just for our, that's it for our shit.